Hey everyone, my name is Tegan, welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today we're going to be talking about what I read in 2022. I'm still working on a post about my favourite books of 2022. So here I am instead to recap the entire year of reading for me. I haven't done one of these like big recap roundup posts since I assume last year. But now that Goodreads has shown me all of my reading statistics for the year, I continue to be a number nerd. Reading wise this year has been something. It's been a little underwhelming as last year was my most ambitious reading year to date and this year has been spent handling university and life and health rather than reading. However I've fallen in love with the works of so many new authors and I've still been making the most of my local library's app for ebooks. This year as usual has also been pretty tough. My mental and physical health once again continues to be at its worst and I'm yet to fall back in love with writing which is the one thing that I've loved for so much of my life and also the ongoing Covid. We won't forget about that. But this video isn't going to focus on all of those lows, it's going to focus on all the good books I've read this year and how I suddenly need to buy another new bookshelf because the Waterstones half price hardcover sale has once again demolished my bank account. This video might be long, let's begin. So some reading stats. My reading goal for the year started at 52 books, which is the goal I've set every year to start with as I've done again for 2023, just because for my lifestyle, usually one book a week is attainable. I hit the goal, then I decided to increase it to 75 books over the summer while I was taking a break from uni, I had a lot of free time, but I didn't, in the end, didn't have time to increase it to 100 as I did last year, which was vaguely disappointing. My shortest book was 23 pages long, my longest was 541 pages long, an average length of about 298 pages, and 25,115 pages read in total, and 84 books read in total. I also made a graph of how many books I read each month, and you can very clearly see the point where university started again. <laughs> and also the point where I had deadlines when I was finishing my bachelor's. So in January I read 10 books, I read a lot of ARCs this month and I had so many favourites as well, I read a lot of good books in January. February was 6 books, March was 8 books, April was 4 books, I had a deadline around this time. May was 5 books, June was 9 books, July was 11 books, also a lot of new favourites in July. I think again I was reading a lot of ARCs that month. August was 9, September 10, October was 3, I was very busy with uni around this time. November was five and I've read five books for 2022, 2021 and 2020 I believe all in November which is just a little bit weird and I finished the year off very weekly with four books in December. So in terms of categories for my star ratings um, my biggest category was four stars with 43.2% which I think is the biggest that category's ever been. So two star was about 18%, three stars was 30%, so about a third of the books I read were three star, and then five star was around 7%. For one star, I don't know the exact percentage, I think only two or three books made it in there, and we won't talk about those. I'm someone who usually feels awful about giving books low ratings and will give one star books two stars instead to kind of make myself feel better. But this year I thought, you know, I will start DNFing books that I don't like instead of giving them low ratings or bad reviews simply because they're not for me. Unless they were an arc where I was kind of required to give a review and I chose to read that book and I picked out that book because it should have been for me. Or it was a book where I read more than half of it and felt I put enough time investment into it at that point to give it a review or a rating. I'm also someone who finishes reading an averagely good or a good but not great book and instantly goes yes very good five stars and has to go through and read the reviews to see if we actually read the same book and see if that book is actually worthy of five stars or just like a very high four which is why I should probably move to Storygraph for like the half and quarter star ratings but the website just doesn't work for my eyes. Even looking back through my Goodreads shelves now, I can recognise that there are books that were incredible in the moment, but the rating's gone down slightly as time has passed and I've reflected on the book. I try to fix those so that my charts are as accurate as possible. But yeah, this year I think I gave out a lot more three star ratings than I have in the past as I tried to be harsher and rate books more on story arcs and character development and other aspects rather than just my enjoyment. I try to actually rate books based on what I think is the quality of the book rather than how much it suits me. I also made a list to see which formats of like different books I read because that's not something that um, Goodreads keeps track of. I 
I, I'm gonna assume Storygraph keeps track of that because that's it. The Storygraph seems to do everything now. And I wasn't surprised to see that like half of my reads were borrowed from local libraries because I've got back into using my library card. I've also got a library card for the library that's local to my uni as well. And also I've been making the most of the Libby Overdraft, Overdraft, Overdrive app. So I have like infinite book options without having to have an actual book. And it's nice for me to have an ebook that I can read like on the bus and on the train to and from the uni. I like that a lot. So paperback I read 17, hardback 6, ebook 14, library ebook 25, library physical 7, audiobook 4, which were all the Raven Cycle books because they're on Spotify as um, audiobooks. And I read 11 arcs, which were all ebooks. So best and worst books of the year. This is where like the excitement is. I am trying to make a more detailed blog post or video of some of my favourite and least favourite books of the year, but I think I did one of those around August time, maybe like halfway through the year, of my favourite reads of the year so far. And I think pretty much all my favourite books were condensed into that video, because since August I've only read one book I would consider to be a favourite. So maybe I won't make that full video, because I don't have anything else to say, honestly. So I'm going to keep this section short and sweet, because I feel like I've already made that video. Also, I have reviews for most of these books on this channel or on my blog, so if you want to see something in detail, you can go see it there. This is also the first time that my favourite books of the year were also all books that came out this year. Usually I read so many backlist books, but this year I had a lot of arcs that became instant favourites, and I actually read a new release actually close to the time where it was released, which is very shocking for me. So my top three books in no particular order are The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I read an arc of this in January and I've been in love with it ever since. It was incredible. It's a Korean folklore mythology retelling and I have a review for that on here and on my blog. The next was The Honeys, which is this... How do I begin to describe The Honeys? It's like a summer camp with bees and vaguely evil girls and it's uh, somehow a lot happens and I still don't fully understand what I read but it was one of the most me books to ever exist and I rated it five stars for hitting all of my niche interests. Uh, I cannot tell you anything about the plot but I loved it. And one of my favourite books of the year was Unraveler by Frances Hardinge and I was torn between this and Deep Light which is another one of her books I read this year but it came out I think a few years ago because I really got into reading her books this year and I fell in love with everything I've read from her so far so I was very torn of which one to pick and I went with Unraveler because that one did come out this year I read an arc in August and I still think about this book near daily again this has been reviewed on the blog and it's been reviewed on this channel if you want to hear some lovely thoughts about that in more detail at the moment I don't have a clear list of least favourite books from the year or even a list of books that I consider to be bad from the year, like a list of the worst books. There's a handful of books that didn't live up to my expectations and one arc that I had to DNF because it should have been for me and it very much wasn't and it was generally such a struggle to get through. But for once I don't believe any of these books were actually disappointing enough for me to list, which I think is a first. So please tell me in the comments below, like, did you reach your reading goal this year? What were your favourite and least favourite books, if you have these favourite books? And also any hidden gems and unexpected disappointments, because I love hearing about those so much. But yeah, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!